Welcome to Champions Heart. You can't play boxing. Featuring boxing addict Johnny Farace and friends from super fans to superstars. Let's roll. Hey, boxing fans. Today on You Can't Play Boxing, I have with me the former IBA, NABA, super welterweight champion from Massachusetts. Put your hands together for Mark the Bazooka Chaluka. Oh, baby. Hey, what's up, how you doing? Thanks for being on my show, I appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, man. So here we are, we're climbing out of this COVID hell, right? Yeah. Where, uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about your background, but how are you, uh, how'd you approach COVID? How is everybody doing, you know, during COVID on your side? Yeah, I mean, my family's safe and my friends are doing well. And I mean, you know, it's, it sucks. It's tough for the, for the, for the boxing world, but thank God. You know, uh, guys like yourself and Bad Promotions are taking the risk and running the show, so keeping us busy. There you go. You got to do you got to keep the show going, right, baby? Yeah. That's it. Speaking of your lineage in boxing, I love it because your whole family is a boxing life or family. You walked into a gym or maybe you got pushed into a gym in a stroller at three years old. <laughs> Talk a little bit right. about how your boxing life is. Yeah, um, you know, I started uh, when I when I was three years old, I was introduced to boxing. My family ran like an inner city boxing community, like just for like a, a young kids for self-defense. And I wasn't really into the competition, but it was it was a good introduction to boxing. And then when I was about 10 years old, I asked my father to take me to the local gym. And I wanted to keep going with the amateur boxing world. And there we go, yeah. fast forward. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Right on. How, how many uh, amateur fights did you end up with? I had about 60 amateur fights. Talk to how important that is to uh, obviously progressing into your pro career. And you have to see what you know what road you want to take. Um, in hindsight, I wish I stuck in the amateurs a little bit longer, you know, because it's free experience. Once you turn professional, you know, every move you make is very crucial, and you know it's important to where you go, or how much money you make, and, and in the amateurs you can grab that experience without having to worry about, you know, making the wrong decision or setbacks or, you know, things like that. So I think it's very important for a fighter to stay, stay amateur. Not too long, but, you know, long enough. Right, yeah, they, can, they, they need that fundamental limitation that they go through over and over again and take those L's as learns, not losses. So right on, so you got, got out of your amateur career, you turned pro. Yeah, I turned professional. Um, my first manager was Vinny Vecchioni. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's a He's an old school manager. I think he was 90, 1995 manager of the year. And, um, you know, we did pretty good locally. And, uh, you know, I was sidetracked with a lot of injuries. I had uh, shoulder surgeries and, uh, you know, a uh, hand broke my hand. and I was derailed a little bit. Um, but since 2013, you know, I've been constant, consistent, and right. flowing pretty good. Yeah. Right. One thing I want to touch on, actually stand up and thank you for your service. You joined, yes, you joined the Marines right after you turned pro. Um, talk about that sacrifice. You know, it's always something I wanted to do. And, you know, a, a lot of kids were uh, from my neighborhood were selflessly joining the military and going over and, and putting their lives on the line. So I joined the reserves. I kind of wanted to have my cake and eat it too. So mm -hmm. I joined the reserves and I still fought professionally. And, um, you know, my number got called to go overseas. And, you know, that took uh, a year away from my boxing career. But. I, you know, gained a lot of experience within the year, uh, in life anyways. You know, talk about that gained experience in the military and how your toughness in boxing helped you in the military and how the military's toughness helped you in boxing. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good point. You know, it was a, not an easy transition, but it wasn't too, too foreign for me to go from boxing to, to the Marines. You know, you gotta be physically fit, you gotta be disciplined, you gotta, you know, cross your T's and dot your I's and all those things. And uh, boxing taught me that early. So joining the military, it was kind of like, you know, I fell right into it. But the military is big, it's, it's teamwork, you know, you, the guy to your right or left to you. And that's something that I think maybe boxing might lack, you know, when you're in there, it's all, it's all you. So it was, it was an eye opener to go in the military and meet different um, people from different backgrounds, colors, creeds, religions, and you know what I mean? It expands your, uh, you know, your life experience a little bit more. 
another life experience that you had in 2013. Uh, your father um, was in an accident that changed everybody's lives and probably molded you even more into this strong man that you are today. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's cliche. It might sound a little corny, but everything happens for a reason, you know. Um, you know, uh, that, that accident, my father left my father uh, partially paralyzed and he needs 24 hours assistance. So my brothers and sisters and I, we uh, we collectively take care of them and um, we work together and, you know, keep my dad going. Um, but, you know, it brought me closer to my family, brought me back to my home and it kept me uh, grounded, you know, as a fighter, you know, you know, jumping around and, and, you know, you have to be home, you have to be disciplined and, and live that monk lifestyle. So, you know, just is what it is, you know. Man, I'm very impressed already, champ. You know, we've only been speaking for about five minutes here, and you've already showed a lot of dedication, determination, and just throughout your whole career and your life, it really seems like you're a very determined man, and I respect you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Okay, so we're in the pros, and and you know, the pro is fucked up. You know, the business of boxing, right? You know. That's crazy. You ran in the same circle as one of my favorite bands, is Dropkick Murphys. Champ, yeah. Our baby. Um, yes, and you came Casey actually, there's a boxing promotional company, and it just seemed to fit together with where you're at in the homeland of one of the greatest fighters ever box ever. Like the Rocky Monkey. Rocky, there he is. Yeah, yes, um, so kind of talk about uh, Ken Casey, the Dropkick Murphys, and, and how they uh, helped your career. Ah, uh, well, Ken, you know, Ken has uh, ties to boxing. I think um, his grandfather and stuff was big into it, so he grew up loving the sport. And, uh, you know, being a music guy yourself, you know that the both the businesses are kind of similar, I, I guess. I mean, I don't know, but I know a lot of music people make the leap over to the boxing world and they're pretty successful pr promotions and stuff like that. So so um, nothing was new with Ken. You know, he knows how to promote a show. He knows how to, you know, attract talent, you know, get the buzz going. So he's done really well with my career and he keeps me active and busy and he attracts other big names, big promotion companies to come to Boston to run shows like Matchroom and, yes. and uh, Al Heyman and Golden Boy. So, uh, you know, I've been lucky enough to ride that, that way. You headlined a show at home that was a phenomenal show. How was that feeling? Yeah, that was great. Oh, at the ESPN, uh, ESPN came to Boston and um, I fought under the Golden Boy banner for that fight. That just says a lot about what Ken's doing for this area, you know, because yeah. it was, it was kind of dead for a little bit. Before Ken really, you know, made um, you know, made a big leap into it. Yeah, yeah. Tell him I, we said thank you as a boxing fan. I thank him. Anybody else that puts forth to, and you're right. Uh, music business definitely uh, parallels a lot with boxing. It's about entertaining. Yeah. It's about selling tickets. It's about entertaining people, keeping them engaged. You know, yeah. and, and, and keeping yourself fresh. <laughs>
there was a big question if Kel had enough in the tank, and uh, subjectively, I could tell you he does, you know. Um, but he's a great fighter, and he's paid his dues, and that was my, my thought going into it. You know, boxing, um, you have to take the apprenticeship approach, you know. You, all fighters, you know, are apprentice to some degree, so um, I wanted to prove myself, and I wanted to gain the experience fighting on a world-class level against a world-class fighter, and um, sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. It didn't go my way that time, but I, I, I took a lot from it, from, from that experience, and um, I still get the fire in my belly, and I'm still healthy, so the, you know the, the journey continues. Yeah. In terms of wins and losses, perhaps it didn't go your way, but in terms of knowledge and experience and everything that you gained and put yourself, put a lot of eyes got put on you. That's when, honestly, I saw you for the first sure. time. I saw you, and you know, and you always take something for a step up fight like that. I commend that fight. That was great. Um, <laughs> talk about knowing you're gonna go across the pond. How your how your 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 mindset got put into place? I was coming off a, a, a pretty good win um, on a matchup card. I beat a, the Canadian champ. Uh, he was undefeated, Brandon Brewer. Great great win. Yeah, it was a good win, and, and um, you know Eddie Hearn, uh, you know, saw the the potential with like Cal and I to you know to get be in the work. So you know once they once they called for the fight, I didn't even I didn't even like ask any questions. I said yes, you know of course. You can't pass up an opportunity to fight a guy like Kel Brook. You know he has such a good, uh, such a good pedigree and such a good, you know, a good name because how well he did with Triple G and uh, beat uh, Sean Porter and the uh, fight with Errol Spence. So, you know, he was buzzing. So, um, you know, it was a big risk. It was, it would have been a big reward, but it wasn't a major setback. I don't feel it was a major setback as far no. as you know. Luckily, I'm healthy. Knock on wood, and uh, you know, I'm still ready to roll. So. Right on, ready to roll. So let's roll, champ. July 25th, you're coming down here to Florida, Hallandale Beach, Florida. We're going to be at the Sport of Kings Theater, the beautiful Palm Spring Park Casino here in, in Miami, Florida. Um, we will be under a minimal capacity, about 300 in house, or so it's 1,000. So there will definitely be the social distancing, but there will be a crowd, unlike some of the fights you've been seeing already. So there will be a little few people, cool. um, you know, inside. And we're really excited we're having you as the main event. You're facing definitely a rough and, and, and rugged Javier Frazier, who is on one of our other cards. So this should be a great fight for you to come back and show your fans that you're going to climb back right back into that top 10, top 15 and shake the yeah. streets. Yeah, if all goes well, you know, I, I respect every fighter, so I'm training really, really hard. And, um, you know, I'm a 12-month out of the year fighter. I don't do the camp thing or blow up, get fat. So I'm always in the gym. I'm always training and sparring. So, uh, um, I know Javier, and I, I've known him for, you know, you know, you get to, the boxing world small, you get to know everyone's name and see, see people. So, you know, he's a spoiler. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to go down. He doesn't want to lose. He wants to live to fight another day. So, you know, I got to do my best to be prepared and get him out of there. You know? Yeah, he'll, he'll definitely go out on his shield. He'll fight to the very end. And he's a hell of a nice guy too, like we all are in the boxing world. Yeah, I bet, I bet he is. Yeah, and you know, just like you said, keeping yourself ready and keeping yourself in shape is just what you did when you faced Brandon Brewer. You got that call in like two weeks, I believe. Two weeks. Notice. Yeah, very short notice. Yeah, it was short notice. It was. Yeah. yeah. So that that's huge in my position. You know, I mean, the big dogs like Canelo, they they run the show, but us guys trying to get in that position, we you got to stay ready because if that phone rings, it could be a big opportunity on the other end. So Love that's it. what I'm Love doing. It. So where you at now? You up in Mass? Or are you down here in Florida yet? I'm up here, but I'm, I'm coming down to train at uh, Fifth Street Gym for the next couple of weeks. If if Florida, you know, lets it happen, I don't know, it's kind of tricky, right? I know. Yeah, you know. I know, some crazy stuff going on. Well, all right, man, I hope you do get down here when you get to Fifth Street Gym. Tell JC Sizzle said hello. I sure. will, yeah. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Yep. Anything else you're working on? Any t-shirts or any websites or any IG you want to push out? Uh, you know, I, I'm on IG under Maki DeLuca. Um, I'm, you know, I got I got some T-shirts on my page. You know, you can a link there. You can go if you want to move the shirt. Other than that, you know, that's it. That's all you got. All right, all right. All right, all right. So here, um, I'm gonna ask you a question here, but you gotta think of it in a pound for pound type sense, right? Let's do it. Yeah. So, the next morning, how does the headline read? The morning after, Mark DeLuca versus Rocky Marciano. How does, it, how does it go? How does the headline read the next day? Oh, man, that's The Rock, man. I know. That's 
the rock. Man. I could have put you in there with with, with uh, uh, Hagler, but Hag, yeah, I mean, that's Hagler too, man. That's the rock. I don't know. Everyone's second to the rock. Yeah, but, uh, humbly ex accept the feet, power. Okay, you're a humble dude, man. That's yeah, thank you, man. All right, yeah, brother. Take, take a time. No problem. We're definitely going to catch up soon. I'll see you when you get down here. You stay safe. Travel safe. And uh, always, dream big, live large, and love life, man. You know? I dig that. Thanks, bro. All right, brother. Hey, yo. You can't play boxing. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Happy right, man. man. We'll be in touch. Thanks, bro. Thanks for the time.